Where were you when the May 2012 Time Magazine cover featuring Los Angeles mother Jamie Grumet and her three and a half year old son broke through airways and our collective consciousness to help us imagine our species full term breastfeeding norm? It's been nearly a decade since the cover shot heard around the world. Today, magazines regularly praise and feature celebrities nursing their babies and social media is deluged with breastfeeding toddlers. In her new book, Modern Attachment Parenting, Jamie shares insights from the fallout around the Time Magazine cover, as well as a compassionate field-tested review of attachment science and the context of modern American life. The book features a foreword by Alanis Morissette and an introduction by attachment parenting founder, Dr. William Sears. I was first exposed to breastfeeding because I was breastfed until I was around five or six. We don't really know when I weaned, but it was just a natural part of what my family did. Mostly, I think it was just me. My mom didn't breastfeed my sister for very long or my brother, but by the time she had me, she was a little bit older. Um, and so she, she wanted to kind of do things on her terms and she thought that that was right. So when you got older with all of this normalizing of breastfeeding at a young age, were you surprised at, to find that there were barriers to breastfeeding? Um, I think that I didn't understand the social stigma that was attached to it because it was so normal in my family. Uh, I knew that some people found breastfeeding toddlers or you know children weird, but I didn't think anybody really said anything to, to one another. Um, and so that that upset me to think about, you know, especially after all of the the awful things that people had said to me after the time cover, the thought of women actually getting that in their, from their close family and friends all the time, it was just um, really upsetting to me. And, and really, it hurt me to think about them because I had a support system, um, you know, that, that made all the difference for, for my breastfeeding journey with both my kids. So were, do you think that being breastfed uh, for the full term breastfeeding length, as they would say, um, as a child influenced your decision to do the cover for time? Oh yeah, I think that it was just, it's such a normal thing. And it was, I, I started a blog really to, to um, share my journey with my family um, about our adoption process. And just in through people commenting and other moms, you know, communicating to me through comments, I started realizing a lot of people didn't breastfeed because I would, I think I would share breastfeeding photos of Aram. He was two and it just didn't seem like anything. Um, and that's when I would start talking about it a little bit more. So I, that's when I started to understand that there was a lack of a support in it. And so I didn't realize how, how much hate there was. Um, and so doing the time cover was, I didn't care at all about that. So it wasn't something where I was scared to show people or I thought it was, it was weird. So I had no problem doing it. Um, and so it was that sort of boldness was kind of um, fun for me, I guess, in some ways. I didn't know the photo they were gonna choose, but just ha having, being breastfeeding my, my three-year-old three -year on the cover was like, that was no big deal. So you've written your book, Modern Attachment Parenting, and you talk in there about some of the trauma that you went through after the time cover. And I'd like to hear a little bit about that. I would love to hear about your book. And I also want to hear about what do you think it's almost a decade later, and now there are covers everywhere with celebrities, breastfeeding, social media is now more prominent. We have all kinds of social media outlets and breastfeeding mothers are just out there in droves with, uh, you know, breastfeeding toddlers on the beach with their bikinis pulled down. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's like you broke some really serious ground, Jamie, and everybody just said, okay, the gate is open. We're all going through now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, it's fun looking back at it because I didn't know if it, I was really, really worried it was going to, it was going to actually hurt the advocacy that we were trying so hard to move forward. Um, just because of the shot that they they chose and how angry people got at first, um, especially mothers who couldn't breastfeed, that that was upsetting to me. Um, but um, looking at it now, I'm I'm really proud of 
of what it's done. And um, I think that those conversations were started. And because of that, you do, you see it all. It's just, you, you see it all over social media. I love the fact that the more people show it, the more normalized it's become. So you see toddlers breastfeeding and no one says anything about that anymore. Um, you see women, oh, basically every single social media influencer is breast, regardless of whether or not they breastfeed for very long, or even if it's just their one shot of them doing it and they use bottles the rest of the time, everyone has a breastfeeding shot there too, which is, um, even if they're sharing their struggles with it. So it's just, but you see it. And I think that that's really important. So even if people, you know, have had problems like my friend, um, Andrea, uh, Gall, she, um, couldn't breastfeed. Um, I think that she's, she was having a hard time, but it was, um, world breastfeeding month, right? It's world breastfeeding week. Um, and so she just posted a photo of her breastfeeding her daughter, but also was talking about, um, you know, uh, using bottles and switching to formula. So everything, everything that we talk about makes it, makes everyone feel, I think, seen and heard and, um, and not ostracized or alone. Well, we were talking before we started recording, it was this interesting tidbit that you shared about the time cover that you did was the second breastfeeding time cover. And it was the same photographer that did the first one. So what was the first one? The first one was um, a, a refugee um, escaping from, I want to say it's Kosovo, but I honestly, I don't, I feel terrible explaining this and not actually having the facts but um she she's leaving and she's walking um with such determination with a long line behind her and is breastfeeding her child um and it's in eastern europe and it looks cold and it's wet um and i believe martin Schuller took that photo and he took my very clearly in studio photo um two you know decades apart and um, it's interesting that those are the two breastfeeding photos on the cover of Time, both taken by the same photographer, but two very different circumstances. So that was kind of neat. You were talking earlier about how things have changed in the last decade, but now there's an even greater change being forced uh, because of the pandemic. And you're, you're hopeful about some of those changes. Yeah. So I think that's the, the coolest thing is my book came out in November of 2019 and started to do podcasts um, about it. And I was trying to explain to people that, um, you know, it's takes, you know, it takes a long time. It takes maybe over the course of decades to see active change in our culture, but it, it does happen, obviously. It um, happens a lot faster than our change in our biology, obviously. Um, so we can do it. And I was trying to encourage people that like the biggest part of having a healthy understanding and, and a healthy family journey is that we do have to kind of look at the world differently and look at culture differently. You're, you're always giving the, the thing with any change in culture that, and especially if it affects our biology, it's either, either going to be a positive or a negative, like driving a car is a good example. We're not getting low impact cardio anymore, but we can go, you know, we can tackle a large area um, of the world, you know, because of this and we can, you know, communicate better with each other in some ways too. So, and because of that, we have to look at it as going, okay, we're not getting enough, not getting enough cardio. We have to now invent either go on walks or we have to invent treadmills. So there's all these like things that happen and you see that in parenting, how it's evolved with our change in culture over hundreds of years. Um, there's just certain things that just aren't working for us and our biology, which is the same as it, it was at the beginning of modern, modern man, which was a long time ago. Um, but because of that, you know, uh, I always told people that, you know, they have to do it slowly but after seeing the whole pandemic and how fast we were to completely change our way of life and how quick the whole world responded to that, I think people now are starting to understand, especially with social justice, they're paying attention more. Black Lives Matter was around, you know, for many years before this, and it suddenly became the spotlight shined because of the times. And I think people are paying attention, seeing the fact that we can really ignite change very quickly. Um, and this is the time that we can really, especially because there's so many uncertain things with how the world's going to look after this, um, we can really start paving the way and carving what we want our family life and our home life to look like and, and 
not be as, you know, not have to bend to what the world looks like, but have it kind of restructured for us. That was beautifully said. Thank you, thank you so much. It's so great to catch up with you. Congratulations on your wedding, being married, and uh, uh, your sons are probably grown up by now. Yeah, they're 14 and 13, and they're just, they're so sweet. They're, they're really just lovely kids. They're, they're out getting Ethiopian food right now with my husband, so. Okay. <laughs> right, I'll let you go join them. Thank you so much, Jamie. Okay, thank you, thank you. Take care.